You gotta think about that. But um, they, um, and then restrictions on free trade. During the political debates, you started to hear some of the fringe politicians talking about, like, we ought to put big walls around the United States, like, uh, we'll make cars, our own cars, and drive them, and grow our own corn, and eat it. You know, it's a, export is the key to growth for the United States. We have the products the rest of the world wants, and we can compete with this, in this rising middle class around the world. It's the key to our recovery. We can't close ourselves back in. Um, the United States is, you know, as, as Mr. Burns from the, you know, the nuclear power plant on The Simpsons, um, you know, if you listen to the media, you think we all had about six months to learn Chinese, you know, but it's, uh, that is not what's happening. Uh, the U.S. is still the largest and most productive economy in the world. We have 4.6% of the world's people producing 25% of the world's output. It's a pretty darn good number. The U.S. economy is larger than that of Japan, China, and Germany combined. China's growth is mainly at the expense of Japan, South Korea, and Mexico, not the U.S. These are jobs we already lost 30 years ago, too. Japan, South Korea, and Mexico. We're, we're fighting the last war here. Um, the U.S. is still the world's largest exporter of goods and services, and service is part of that. We attract more foreign investment capital than any nation. We have the finest higher education system in the world by far. No kid ever grow, graduates from Baker High and then goes to Bombay Community College. It just doesn't happen. It's a one-way street. And a culture of technology and innovation that's second to none, which is really the strength of the United States. In fact, I saw this from Dan Becker at the Ivy Funds. There are still some things we do well in the U.S. We innovate, we create, and we invent. And I really do think that's the, um, uh, that's the key. Uh, these are the books we use on campus. Just uh, one up on Wall Street by Peter Lynch that was the great money manager at Magellan. A Zebra and Lion Country is the, a book about small cap investing. A lot of people get confused. They think small caps are yarmulkes. That's not at all. It's, it's, uh, it's, uh, that joke works really well in certain markets. It's um, the, um, let's see. The Money Masters by John Train looks at 18 great investors and how they did it. And a new book for us, a little book that beats the market by Joel Greenblatt, looks at companies like Walmart and Microsoft when they were little and tries to figure out companies today that have those same characteristics. Really great book. Two books by Ben Graham. Ben Graham was Warren Buffett's professor at Columbia in the 1930s. Ben Graham was war born in January of 1890. So that would make him uh, an Aquarius. And uh, so they, um, <laughs> and I tell my students, these are very analytical books. Put them on your desk, even if you don't read them, very intimidating to other people. Um, the, uh, and two books about why you've got to swim against the tide by Fisher and Dreamin. And, and some great sites, Bloomberg.com, NPR.org. has a new section called Planet Money that goes into longer time spans to look at uh, issues. Pretty good. Seeking Alpha, Investopedia, Motley Fool, and Yahoo Finance. If you had one book to recommend to a young person, I think I'd start with a book we start with each semester, one up on Wall Street by Peter Lynch. He did the he, amazing job managing that Magellan Fund for all those years. And he talks about how he found the great stocks that made that fund. Like about 35 years ago, his wife came home with hosiery in those legs eggs. And he realized Haynes, the manufacturer, was now going to be able to sell women's hosiery no longer just in department stores, but now in these kiosks in supermarkets. So he bought the stock of Haynes that went up tenfold. He said sometimes you learn from competitors. He was visiting Holiday Inn's management in Memphis once, and he asked them, who's your toughest competitor in lodging? And they said, here's these guys down in Texas called La Quinta, and they are kicking our butt. And he bought stock in La Quinta, and it went up 20-fold. So, and a lot of people don't know it, but La Quinta in Spanish actually means next to Denny's. A lot of, a lot of, people, <laughs> a lot of people don't know that, but it, it's kind of, kind of bilingual, and I can, um, and I know right now, oh, this is what I was going to show you. I, I got this, I got this downstairs, because I never read the USA Today, but I, always, but I always pick it up in the hotels. That's kind of McNews, you know, and it's getting smaller and smaller. But I, but I always look at where I am whenever I'm traveling, and so, I'm, you know, I'm always at home in Louisiana. I look at that one page with the one news story from every state, and today's was so good that that's why I brought it out to you. I looked up Louisiana. This is awesome. The town is, they have one town, and the town is Mansfield. Does anybody know where this is? Where is it? Uh, well, North, okay. It's a man... This is, for some reason, this is the biggest story in Louisiana today. Mansfield, Louisiana. Last night, thieves broke into a pharmaceutical warehouse and stole two pallets of Viagra. <laughs> That's the number one story in our state. That is incredible. Oh, my God. It says here, Mansfield police are looking for hardened criminals. There's a, there's a wonderful, wonderful story. And, um... <laughs> I know, right now you're thinking, where did Dan find this guy, and for heaven's sake, why did they let him work with children? And um, so, um, 
So I just spent like five minutes left. I just want to show you the, uh, I put these on the center of your tables. This is what, if the students' research reports are in full, they're 20 pages length in length on each of 40 companies. You can get it at the website. It's all free. It's all academic. But this is a little, looks like, looks like they did get here, though. It looks like they are here. That's good. I, I send them by mail, and I always get nervous about that. But I'm not one of those people that trashes the post office. I hate those people. Those people that always say, oh, I can't believe it's 44 cents to mail a letter. I always want to look them right in the eye and say, hey, pal, if you take from the day they pick it up to the day they deliver it, what is that? That's like a penny a day. That's nothing. So there's a stand up for your post office. So they, uh, I guess the things we're most proud of is we've sent uh, more than 600 students from this program. It's the only program like this in the country. And we sent over 600 students to jobs in the investment community. We just had our big investment conference. It's, uh, if you want to market for next year, it's April 26th at the Westin. And it's, uh, we, 40, the executives of 40 companies come in and present. It's free. It's a very unusual opportunity to see the people that lead these companies. On page three, you can see that 10 years ago, Hancock Bank here asked us if they could create a mutual fund using the students' research. And uh, we, we went ahead and did it. And that fund has now been out for 10 years. It has $125 million in it, which we think is great. I mean, it's not big in the mutual fund world, but $125 million. And it's outperformed 99% of the 7,000 equity mutual funds in the country over the last 10 years, which I think is amazing. It's actually pretty embarrassing. It's because I have the lowest payroll on Wall Street, zero. You know, and uh, or as one kid said to me the other day, he goes, actually, it's negative because we pay you to take the course. So it's, um, they, uh, and there's a company called Thompson's in Boston that gathers financial data. So we send our target prices and our earnings per share estimates. And so does Goldman Sachs and Merrill Lynch and everybody else. But they don't know we're part of a university. And once a year, this woman at Thompson calls the director of research at every investment firm in America. And she calls me every October, and she always has one question. She always calls and says, has there been any turnover at your firm? And every, every year, I say, yes, yeah, so 200 have gone again. You know, it's a. <laughs> And she's going, this is the worst manager. You know, and, um, <laughs> and then finally, if you open it up to the middle, I know a lot of you guys haven't opened up a magazine like this in some time, but is um, the, uh, is, uh, <laughs> whoa, look at the yield on that one. There's, um, these, uh, these are, <laughs> these are, <laughs> These are the 40 companies we follow, and they're all headquartered in the South. They're all, small, we call them stocks under rocks, the companies people at Wall Street doesn't pay much attention to. The first one is AFC Enterprises. That's actually Popeye's Chicken and Biscuits. Um, I, I saw um, our, uh, earlier, earlier our speakers from Wilbros. That's one of the companies we follow, one of the great companies we enjoy working with. Calmaine Foods, that's the largest distributor of eggs in the United States. They're out of Jackson. If you're the shopper in your family, you know the price of eggs has gone up a lot in the last five or six years. And I'm going to tell you something, but I can't leave this room, is uh, they're not paying the hens any more than they did five or six years ago. So the margins are terrific. And um, then you see uh, Hibbit Sporting Goods. Do you have a Hibbit in your town? You know, they, they're always, uh, we, we kind of discovered this company for Wall Street. We picked them up about 12 years ago. They now have 800 stores. And what they do, it's the greatest model in the history of business. They wait for a super Walmart to open in a small community, and they put their store <clears throat> right next door. It's great. They pay nothing for advertising. I was with the CEO the first time. He's got a chart. He draws a line at the bottom, a box at the top. He goes, Peter, this is our store in Hazard, Kentucky. The line at the bottom is the highway. The box, that's, the high, that's our store. You can't see our store from the highway. You think that's bad? I said, I don't know, sir. He says, well, it's not bad. The only place I want you to see the store from is the Walmart parking lot. So it's, um, and, um, <laughs> and the stock's been a miracle stock. And, you know, you know, we don't, we, the Birkenrode family, which is Aaron Selber up in Shreveport, if you ever met a wonderful, wonderful family, uh, they've been great benefactors of ours. But we don't have unlimited money, so we can only follow companies that we can either drive to with as a cheap Southwest flight. So we were flying to, to uh, Alabama, to Birmingham, to see Hibbit a few years ago, and we were on Southwest, and it was open seating, and I got separated by my students by about six bros, and I was sitting next to this good old boy from Mississippi, and he had the overalls on, and all he's telling me how he's never flown before, and I do what I always do in that case. I, I pretend I don't speak English. And uh, there's a... Uh, there's, uh, Oh, non pali inglesi. And, um, um, and so now we're, we're midway through the flight. Now he's bragging about the fact, he's still talking, he's bragging about the fact that he and his brother have just finished a jigsaw puzzle, and it only took them seven months. So finally, I just couldn't keep my tongue in my mouth anymore. I said, seven months? Is that good? He goes, oh, yeah. Round the box, it says three to five years. So it's a... <laughs> Students are like, where are you taking us? So it's on the uh, <laughs> and uh, and uh, uh, a couple of others is Rollins Incorporated. You don't know them as Rollins. That's the parent company of Orkin Pest Control. Why are they making so much money? 
bed bugs. Man, I, they're at a conference this week. They taught me something I want to spread out. I want to be the evangelist for this. If you stay at a hotel, there's bed bugs in there. And you know how you don't get it to come home, to come home with you? You put your luggage in the tub. Now take that. There's a, so there's a little bit of non-financial information you get every, every once in a while. They, um, I guess two more I just mentioned to you is uh, Mac Moran Exploration in New Orleans. We think this is very interesting. Don't go out and buy these stocks. I mean, go do your own research and all. But Mac Moran is, you know, in the, the shelf of the Gulf of Mexico, the shallow water has been America's pincushion. You know, we've drilled well after well after well there. But they're all at about 10 to 12,000 feet. Mac Moran is drilling at 30 to 35,000 feet in that same area. And they think they've found some of the most significant reservoirs in the last 50 years in the Gulf of Mexico. Now, it's, it's seven miles down. They're drilling in about 20 feet of rock water, but about seven miles down. And so they've had lots of problems, as you can imagine, bringing it up. But it's, uh, I think somewhere in 2012, you're going to get some reports on there. And it's very, very interesting. Stocks has fallen from 16 to 8 because of natural gas prices. But they're, they're smart people. That's Jim Bob Moffat's company. And uh, I think it's a good thing to keep an eye on. And they've named all the wells after pirates, which is great. Like the first well is the Davy Jones, which is the pirate. It's not the former lead singer of the monkeys. But it's, um, which is, I think, part of the problem with the stock. I think we've been doing much better if we could. Um, uh, Feet, Blackbeard East, Blackbeard West, Captain Blood. You know, it's just great. It's uh, so you're gonna you're gonna enjoy following that. And I just finally wanted to thank you though for having me. I uh, enjoyed coming out here a few years ago, and and I'm a very lucky guy. I met my wife here in Baton Rouge. She was an economist with the state when I was working up here, and uh, I'm a very lucky guy. I got a beautiful wife and two wonderful teenage boys, and I don't have a mean bone in my body. But the one mean thing I like to do, and ooh, just thinking about it makes me happy, is I I like to take the prissiest students and put them on the grossest field trips. Just ooh, just seems like the right thing to do, you know? And uh, like if I see a girl that maybe grew up in Manhattan, very privileged, went to private boarding school, it's like, come on, Julie, you'll be following uh, Sanderson Farms, the chicken processing company. <laughs> and, uh, she's like, how was I selected? Uh, your accounting background, get in the car, Julie. So it's, uh, thanks so much for having me. I appreciate it. Thank you. <laughs>